Hi, as a continuation for our lectures about power electronics, today my uh, lecture is titled Why Power Electronics? And this is very important topic and slides about really some answers for some questions are uh, uh, in your head about maybe power electronics. And I will highlight some important points why we need something called higher efficiency. And even does it work for a few percentage? improvement in efficiency does it worth to invest all that money or no so if we look at the uh, maybe the cycle of power conversion the traditional one which is start from the coal as one of the traditional uh, energy sources they will go uh, through some fuel and chemical processes and then convert it to thermal uh, energy going through uh, some ste steam turbine turbines and then generators the transmission and then the electrical load so during this cycle we have for example 100 percent energy contained in the coal here and then after some conversion i will lose some power and now the, the, the efficiency for chemical process here maybe uh, have losses of 65 percent then i will come up with just energy of 35 percent after also the mechanical and electrical conversions Maybe I will get at the load side just 16.5% out of the 100%. Okay, so this the process looks very loosey and we have to do something as power electronics. Why? Because fossil fuel now, maybe still the most used energy, maybe 85% in many of the countries. Okay, and the countries who adopted the or employed the renewable energy, they are really few until now. In the best scenarios, if we look at the fossil fuel energy, they will last for just 150 years. But what will happen after that? We don't know. We don't know if we will be successful to replace all the traditional systems or energy systems with the new systems, efficient and clean. Okay? That's why we have to work now in many strands just to uh, uh, extend this period or replace it so we have to extend this period or even replace these transitional resources but there is a problem the first one is to use it efficiently still we have problem with it because we want to stop the coal and gas and petrol uh, to be uh, consumed because this affects the global warming and this is a big problem for now okay so that's why using efficiently and maybe it's not part of power electronics science it's part of some policies uh, and uh, governmental level uh, decisions to use it efficiently okay but this is not a solution because it's still we have problems out of that because of the global warming so we have other solutions which is uh, improve the energy Confer efficiency conversion efficiency and that's maybe part of our role okay if we increase the efficiency so that's why we can really reduce all these losses here okay during all the cycle and we can get more power here and we can really reduce using these traditional resources or we can replace all these traditional resources by a new renewable energy promoting them for integration uh, with our traditional grid systems. And those can be really done by power electronics engineers who develop some power electronic circuits, okay? So that's why we have to now uh, in, in maybe interfere within all the cycle and replace it. I will convince you maybe in another way by looking at this example where we have 100% of energy and just we get 16.5% of energy so if I have 100 kilowatt as energy contained in the coal I will finally get 16.5 kilowatt okay so what, what, what what's the point here the point is we have about 6 to 1 percent between the energy uh, contained here and energy delivered to the load and do we need to think about always the sources? Do we need just to think about, okay, replace the coal with wind turbine, replace the gas with some solar systems, replace the uh, nuclear systems or other petrol systems with 
some tidal systems or geothermal or any other clean energy systems looking at the problem from the energy side is not a solution and i will give you this example the question is why do we spend of efforts on the load side which is this one okay like motor efficiency our electric vehicle chargers our our lamps why we have to think about these small devices which are consume consumable okay or consuming power okay they are our loads why we do we we think about these rather than thinking just uh, on the source side okay why we have to improve the load side as well because every saving in the load side for example if you have an electric vehicle with a charger and you replace that charger with another charger and you made a saving of one kilowatt that one kilowatt will be reflected back as saving as six kilowatt which is a lot and that will make you reduce your energy okay or or uh, uh, from the coal or from other resources by about six times okay which is really good that's why we have also to focus to produce higher efficiency drivers and also chargers and circuits for our load side okay so we have to work on the on the on the, on the source side and also on the load side to produce higher efficiency cycle that will be also uh, that will be really be a solid system so that's why when you think about power electronics don't think about it from the sources and we want to integrate sources and how we uh, make conversion from another uh, form of power to another form by just at the source side no you also can really think about the energy and power efficiency from the load side for the chargers for the lamps and for also uh, other drivers okay i will give you another example and that example is about power converter and that converter get some power power input and give us some power output during this conversion okay definitely we will lose some power which is called power loss i think there is no doubt about this one and if i ask you what is the power efficiency you will say the efficiency always is the ratio between power output divided by power input okay that's good but what is the power input the power input if i want to write the power input in terms of power losses and power output i think the power input is going in and power output and power losses are going out that means the power input equals what is the output plus what is lost okay so it's it equals power output plus power loss okay if i just compensate this power input into this equation and just rearrange the uh, the, 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 the equation here okay I will get finally the power output in terms of efficiency and power loss there is no power input anymore I just read of that okay so the power output now equals the efficiency divided by 1 minus efficiency multiplied by power loss okay I will take this equation to another level just for comparison and that's very very important slide because you're gonna reveal we're gonna reveal how 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 much few percentage improvement in efficiency can really enhance our power delivery okay so if i have some power input and they are going to the converter one and converter two and i have designed the converter one which is the first converter with some switches with some um, uh, uh, controllers just to make the efficiency 85 percent and i was successful in this happy okay but sometimes i just made some improvement on that and i reproduce another converter that converter has efficiency of 95 percent but i kept the same size for example okay so i have two converters one is 85 percent efficiency one is 95 percent efficiency with the same size when I run this, these, those inverters, I will lose some power, okay? So I, I run both of them, okay? And I still consume power from the output until I reach exactly the same power losses in each of them. So I have, for example, power losses here 
of one kilowatt and also I consumed here lots of power until I reach the same level of power losses the question is how much output power I can get from the first converter or how much output power I can get from the second converter if I really lost the same amount of power in both of them so the losses are the same how much power I can get here if you just compensate these values 85% and 1 kilowatt in this uh, equation I think you will get 5.7 kilowatt that means I will deliver 5.7 kilowatt to the load and at that point I will be losing at that time 1 kilowatt as losses but how much power in the second case I will deliver 19 kilowatt so if I have one machine I can really make it three times okay this amount is a three times that amount that means I can deliver power three times more and the losses is still one kilowatt okay here is the point if I just increase the efficiency from 85% to 95% I can deliver not just 10% more of output power no three times more of output power according to this equation and that means if I have if this can supply one machine this can supply three machines okay and that's the point of higher efficiency and your role as power electrical engineer to find a way to increase any converter and to produce novel and develop novel converters to make the efficiency higher and higher and higher because it it worth it worth as it says here okay so how we think about efficiency how i i am a power electrical engineer for example and i want now to increase the efficiency for a converter what routes i can go to be honest it's we have very 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 various routes okay but i will focus on just two routes which are the popular and most important routes the first one is to focus on switches i mean by the switches diodes transistors and thyristors and other switches we have many okay and when we look at the switches you you might find different switches for example for the transistor different switches for example uh, uh, MOSFETs or IGBTs and also if you look at the material side you will find silicon, silicon carbide or GAN uh, transistors and what are the features for each of them this knowledge will enable you to decide which one is suitable for your converter that makes the efficiency higher okay this is one route the other route is to change the topology so you keep the same switches for example you are using silicon carbide and you will keep using the same silicon carbide but you want to change the topology different uh, places or number of switches okay to provide the higher efficiency target okay that can be for example these are just for examples by using interleaving uh, topology or switch capacitors topology or any other topologies and you you should be also aware of what's called hard switching or soft switching that really makes a big jump for the efficiency recently so if we want to talk about the switches we have different switches like this transistors and thyristors for example in this module we will be covering some of them for the days we have general purpose high speed and Chutke diode okay we will go through these and for the transistors BGT MOSFETs and IGBTs how really we can assist the losses and uh, efficiency for any power converter uses these and also for the thyristors uh, for the SCR GTO track and set so these actually will be covered also briefly about uh, their features and how they work this is one strand to look at these switches and uh, look at the providers and which provider can really uh, help you to provide higher efficiency the second way is to look about the topology and these are some examples this one uses one switch here which is MOSFET and one switch as a diode and one inductor here this one uses transformer still one switch here and one switch there and this one is boost converter we have one switch there is some some different topologies this is for for uh, 
as a buck converter, this is as a boost converter. But here we have a transformer, center type transformer, but we have here two switches and two diodes. Does it worth increasing these components now? It's just cost uh, issue or they are really increased efficiency, okay? So if you have lots of topologies in your head and you know the features for each of them and you know how really to change one to one, okay? That's the skills that you have, uh, that you need to have to be a good power electrical engineer. For example, if in the electric vehicle, usually we have two cascaded converters, we have batteries, those batteries will supply finally machines, okay, to drive the wheels. But these machines need AC power. So that's why we have those inverters to convert it from DC to AC. But those inverters need a high level of DC power or DC voltage, like 400 or 800 volt but this one is small so we have to use boost converter so that's why we have multi-stage converters to finally get the goal okay some of the development recently one guy has merged these together as one converter instead of two cascaded two stage conversion it's just one stage conversion that makes the efficiency higher and also the losses lower and also the number of switches may be lower okay so the changes doesn't mean that you reduce the a number of switches it might be increasing the number of switches but also that will contribute to higher efficiency okay so this is just an example of why you need to think about switches and topologies i hope i delivered my message to you about why really power is so important and how to think about it from the load side or source side and also how we really target higher efficiency converters and how uh, we can achieve these goals by looking at the switches side or the topology side. Thank you very much for listening and see you in the coming videos.